Oh yeah, I'm Alex Milway, and I'm here to talk to you about Hotel Flamingo and um, give you a little bit of an insight into where the ideas came from. Now, uh, Hotel Flamingo was sort of born out of quite a dark place. My mother had just died of cancer and I wanted to do something really happy and positive. And uh, I walked into my young daughter's room and she was sitting surrounded by her cuddly toys that she had, she was doing class I guess teaching them things and uh, she had little blankets out and cushions and things and it seemed like a really nice idea to do something about a girl that was I guess playing the adult and um, taking responsibility for all of her creatures and, and friends that she had around her and I, I didn't want to do a zoo I wanted the creatures to have some sort of level of freedom and autonomy and be I guess still still humans, but very much animals. So, um, yeah, I ran with that idea a bit, and I thought, well, not a zoo, so what would be great, uh, what would be a great place to use instead? And a hotel came to mind. And uh, obviously, the hotel you have, you have to have a team of creatures, so there was a core member of staff, but then you had all the guests coming in, and so every every story would have different creatures in it that would have different problems, and. The great thing for Anna is she inherits this hotel uh, for animals that, and she's got no skills, no hotel skills at all, but she's very confident, very sort of strong, very much like my youngest daughter. Um, and because of that, she's, she's up for the challenge. And so every day when uh, a new guest arrives, she has to sort of find out what makes the guest happy. And obviously she's got her team of staff around her who, who are animals and will probably have a few clues, but... Um, there's some great questions that are asked. You know, how how would you feed a how do you feed a penguin, or how, how big should a giraffe's bed be? Um, all these sorts of questions that, as a young girl, you wouldn't you wouldn't know. You'd have to go and do some research. And I, um, the great thing about Anna is she learns it all on the job, so she gets to make mistakes and she uh, gets to put things right. She gets to sort of learn how to manage a team because she's quite entrepreneurial. She likes you know she wants her hotel to be a success. Um, yeah, so, I mean, on top of that, obviously, I wanted it to be a lot of fun. And that's the great thing about animals, especially animals dressed up as humans, is you can play with all of those sort of lovely characteristics and, and scale, you know, so we can have giant elephants turn up or you could have tiny little ants turn up on holiday because everyone wants to go on holiday, don't they? No one wants to sort of live their, live their life without enjoying summer and sun or maybe even sort of different times of the year because in the books we do sort of go through some of the seasonal things um, so we've got carnivals and uh, spring you know the first book is very much about spring I think and everything coming to life um, but yeah it is, it is fun to go through the seasons and uh, see them experience the different weathers there's lots of weather and so the setting of Hotel Flamingo is very much sort of uh, Mediterranean, that sort of south of France, European seaside town where you have beautiful coloured coloured houses and buildings. And there's loads of style, you know, it's really stylish. Um, hopefully some of that comes through in the books, although my skills maybe don't do the Art Deco-ish sort of time period justice, but I try my best to make lots of details and there's lots of um, uh, ornate kind of stuff if you look in the backgrounds, everything's kind of designed. Um, so yeah, so the characters as well, you've got Madame Le Pig, who is this very strong chef, who uh, is very much in charge of her kitchen and gets very grumpy, um, mainly because she's very good and she knows it. Um, and there's T-Bear on the door, who is this kind of, the, he's like the father figure, I guess, uh, for Anna, who went in a way, he, he is quite protective and he's very strong, so she doesn't have to worry about anything when he's around. And if, if Mr Ruffian, who's sort of the bad guy owner of the Glitz, which is up on the headland, um, their rival hotel. Uh, if there's any trouble with Sir Ruffian, T-Bear is in there um, to put things right. Then we've got Lemmy, who's Lima, and he's he's fun. All sorts of things happen to Lemmy, I guess. He's often the one doing the, the, the falls over, or he has to do the silly things. And um, then we've got uh, Miss Fragranti, who is the flamingo, sort of theatrical flamingo, who turns up... Um, and she's great. I love drawing her as well. She's great. But also she's very wise. So it's great to have this very wise kind of worldly 
uh, flamingo that um, is full of advice for Anna, which is great. She's a uh, quite an unusual character, I guess, in that respect. That she's a uh, she's quite a calming presence, and she um, she helps out all the time. Um, so yeah, there's plenty of plenty of characters that that uh, make me really happy to draw them. Actually, it's um it's always a joy to draw a joy to get the the pencil out and get cracking on them. And um, so yeah, so another thing about Hotel Flamingo is that. Uh, I like to write songs and um, make models and things, as you can see. And, um, I probably should end with a song. So uh, for this I'm going to be Tea Bear, so I need to change my hat. There we are. Now I should need my guitar. Here we are. Hello and welcome to Hotel Flamingo Please won't you all step inside Our doors are open to every single creature Our motto is the source of all our pride Who are our guests today? Let's see who's come to stay But will you look after them with ease? They be ten feet tall, or fill our swimming pool, or give our other guests fleas. Oh, hello and welcome to Hotel Flamingo. Please won't you all step inside. Our doors are open to every single creature. Our motto is the source of all our Thanks for listening.